Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and today's video is going to be about Google Chart API integration with FileMaker and how easy it is to get started on this process. So in this database, which is the, the FileMaker free template for invoices, um, we're going to be taking a look at how I did this. So first of all, in this database, there are some FileMaker charts that exist, so you can kind of see what you can get from FileMaker charting. And I used uh, ju and just created a handful of invoices in here as my sample data. So we can see like a list of those invoices. Um, but before I get to th um, charting the actual data, let's just take a look at the moving components of what exists. So this is what my chart would look like of a simple um, dashboard kind of a thing that shows you certain numbers. And this is about the easiest starting point I could think of because this is the entire HTML code that exists to draw this chart. And as you can see, we have HTML header, we have a JavaScript that gets called, the, ec the area of the actual data is right here, and that's where it sets both the label and the actual values. So for example, if I want to change the value from memory to be uh, 95, I can just change that value right here. And uh, the next area is below that are how big to draw the chart, and that's basically all there is. Um, so when I look at it now, now I have memory is set all the way to 95. What if I want to chart my own data? Well, I have another layout in this database called Google Chart B, which breaks it into three fields. So in this one, I'm going to do a couple of things. One of them is I've also got another record in here that doesn't show the, the little dashboard um, gauges, but it actually shows um, like column or pie or something like that, other types of data. That chart looks like this. Um, and it gets data directly from the database. So the only part that took a little bit of work, um, because this is really just three fields uh, that are on the web viewer. So let's take a look at that web viewer. It's basically global chart, top, data, and bottom. And those are just three fields in a table. And right here is where those three fields are. And so you could just type any data in. It happens to be HTML code. And what makes my chart actually work is the part that's in the middle. So this middle part will actually get data from the database. I could manually change it and put like Levenger 0. Then my chart would show, it doesn't even show in there because it's gone. If I put a dollar, um, then it would show up at least with something very, very thin. Too small to even see that sliver actually. So let's, let's talk about what it takes to get data from FileMaker to this chart. So I have a script. Um, here on my invoice layout, I'm going to turn script debugger on so we can actually see the code run. And what it does is it uh, sets some prefixes for each line because the data has to be formatted a certain way. And then for each line, let's take a look at exactly what it's building here in the dollar data element. It builds the data structured in a certain way. It has to have a square bracket prefixed in post, and it also has to have a comma at the end of each line. And then the name of the company has to be with a single quote. So I'll um, go ahead and step through the rest of this. It's going to basically build that code for all five lines. Then at the end, it goes to my chart layout, and it populates that field with the data that it grabbed from the script. So it's a very, very simple script. And then here's what the data would be from my chart. Let's say that I don't want all five. Let's say I only want four invoices. I'm going to get rid of the XYZ systems one. So I'll click on that record and just omit it. Um, so now I only have that other set of data. And if I chart it, I'll get only those four bits of data now uh, as opposed to the five, which is pretty cool. But you want to know it's really cool. This is really cool. I can change one word in my chart, in my HTML code, from the word pi to, let's say, bar. Now when I run my chart, I'll get the exact same data, but it'll show in a different way. If I want it in line, I change it to line. If I want it in some other format, I can just change it to that word. Uh, maybe the best one is column. So this is really powerful and really simple. Um, and with that change made, I can go back to my invoice list, maybe show all of my records, and then rerun that code, and then I'll get all five, but shown in that other way. It's a very powerful and very simple tool, and I hope you have fun playing with the uh, Google Chart API as I have. Have a great day.